Let's start off with this question from Fiddler underscore 2K. Um, and I'm actually going to combine it with another question from Octolima. Uh, mm -hmm. Fiddler's question, though. With the Immortals of Avian PC uh, system requirements dropping today and the recent Remnant 2 discussion, I think a lot of people are wondering if this is what we should expect from Unreal Engine 5 moving forward. When should we see large AAA devs shipping UE5 games and do we expect scalability to improve? So just to put that into context, the low system requirement for Avium is a, uh, 5700 XT. Um, and That's the and latest RT one? Yeah, uh, it's the one okay. that I just linked to on that Steam page that you okay, uh, supplied. Uh, 2080 Super, cranky. Um, and uh, yeah, Ryzen 7 3700X, Core i7 9700. Now, what's interesting about that is that all of those specifications exceed Xbox Series S. So that's going to be fun, isn't it? <laughs> um, let us move back to the questions, though. And this one from Octolima, which is kind of coming at things from a different perspective, but I think it's worth uh, sort of weighing in with. Uh, would love to see Alex weigh in on this one. Playing devil's advocate for a minute with a combination of upsampling and DLSS 3's interpolation, how much of a frame is even quote unquote uh, real anymore if temporal data is being used to bring a game from 1080p to 4k and then doubling the frame rate with frame gen we can technically say about 75 percent of every two frames is simply generated and not in fact made of quote unquote real pixels in hmm. my opinion these technologies are great for allowing higher fidelity rendering at higher levels of performance but some seem to think of them as a cheap trick to avoid optimization what are your thoughts on the matter? Wow. So the reason I've um, brought those two questions together is that um, obviously on the Avium uh, spec list, it's talking about um, those specs being uh, recommended with upscaling in the quality preset. So they're saying these are the recommended specs, but you need to be using upscaling. And we had a similar in, uh, incident or, or observation, if you like, as Fiddler 2K under, uh, uh, points out, with Remnant 2, where, you know, obviously it was saying you're going to need to use upscaling here. Now, my argument at the time was Unreal Engine 5 is kind of built around quality of, pix uh, qu yeah, quality of pixels, which are then upscaled, right? This was slightly undermined by them releasing a patch which added 50% no. to well, GPU performance. So but I, Alex, I can see you <laughs> champing at the bit here. So <laughs> let, let's talk about this because you've got a lot to get through here. Well, with the Remnant 2 patch, one thing is it did is a lot of people don't realize it maybe, but they also added an option for high quality shadows in that patch, which was by default turned off. Right. Which they might have just broken out a setting, by the way. So like, I don't like the reporting about that because people like once again... Like they, they just look at the numbers and they don't actually look at the visual experience on screen. It could have, that remnant patch could have actually downgraded the graphical quality in some way that people weren't noticing directly off the way. Um, I have yet to see any good reporting on what the difference actually is in terms of visuals between the default versions of those patches. Uh, so I don't actually want to give lend credence to that necessarily. Um, the second thing I would like to say is that I have, I have a quote to read because I just happened to open up an article about the LSS3 here and that was linked to the NVIDIA subreddit. And there's a quote there that is representative of uh, something mentioned in that second question there. And the person says, I'll read the first two lines here. Ah, uh, yes, DLSS, the technology that went from now you can play this awesome new game on your 2060 with 60 FPS to now you have to have a 3080 Ti and DLSS to play at 2K and 60 FPS. So the idea is that a lot of people think that DLSS, TSR, XESS, mm -hmm. FSR2, whatever, have become a crutch for lazy devs and bad optimization. And I just am completely against this idea in general um, because that we are also in the last three to four years, alongside the rise of DLSS and all these things, we're seeing a dramatic increase in the quality per pixel in terms of how much geometric detail is there, how much texture detail is there, and the quality of the lighting informing each pixel's rendering, whether that's through ray tracing in software and or hardware and or just any other shading techniques. And these things don't come for free. 
people. Like you don't, the GPU just doesn't get magically better at doing more expensive tasks over time. And the entire reason for the existence of DLSS is essentially ray tracing is really expensive. We need a way to make this viable on modern GPUs at high frame rates with good visual quality. And DLSS is a key answer to that. So much so was it the answer that the entire basis of Unreal Engine 5 was, we know we're going to be upscaling. We have to build all of our technology with this in mind. And it's they've done it in a way even where they are purposely actually limiting TSR and UE5 to not scale in a perfectly like way it technically should. Because right now in UE5, um, if you run at, let's say, 1080p internally, uh, upscaling with TSR to 4K, they do not actually... Uh, change the geometric density output to the equivalent it should be at real native 4K because it would make TSR too expensive, essentially, at 4K. So right now, if you play a game with TSR at like 1080p internal versus a real native 4K, you'll actually get more geometric detail in a real 4K, which is kind of antithetical to the way these upscaling algorithms should technically work. They should always use like the MIP and the LED level of the output resolution, but they're not doing that in Unreal Engine 5 because Unreal Engine 5's entire basis is nearly every single effect that makes Unreal Engine 5 look good scales on a per pixel level, real per pixel level. Um, Lumen does, Nanite does, and so does even VSM because it is a virtual shadow map that is trying to get as many shadow texels into the real screen pixels. And so all these things are now super dependent upon what your chosen internal resolution is in terms of how expensive they are. So adjusting the resolution internally of a UE5 game is much more expensive than adjusting the internal resolution of some game that came out three years ago that doesn't have ray tracing. So I completely disagree with the negativity around the usage of DLSS for optimization. And it's just literally graphics getting better and people getting upset about that. Yeah. Um, (laughs) so i I take issue with calling pixels real pixels or not real pixels because (laughs) fundamentally all still being rasterized with the graphics card right like what even is a real pixel versus a non-real pixel like they have to be generated somehow and i i think it's all completely valid and it's just a new paradigm of where we're going right now yeah I, i i agree with all that and um I think the, the the more we lean into these technologies, the better they become. DLSS 2 has improved over time. FSR 2 has seen improvements. XCSS has seen improvements. I imagine DLSS 3 frame gen is also going to improve more over time. And there's probably going to be even new technologies that are about trying to get as much pretty stuff happening on screen while running still fine. And not because just... There's so pixels from one frame to the next when they're native, they're so similar to one another. Why are we wasting all this power getting two pixels that look nearly the exact same when we could do a nice interpolation and or a nice guessing or a nice reference to see what it kind of looks like, but has like 90% of the quality. And it's all about compromises always in rendering. Yeah. Almost all games use like lower resolution internal buffers, but we don't see people complaining about that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like we've reached that point long ago, right? Where all these different buffers and render targets and everything, they're all variable resolution based on the need of the game. And that's been a solution to get the kind of visual quality that people demand. And it's yeah. been the idea of seeing a game where everything is rendered at full native resolution across the board, it's just almost a waste of pixels at that point. Yes, completely. It's too much. Well, uh, you know, o- Octolima makes a really interesting point in that, you know, he's pointing out that in the you know, Cyberpunk 2077 RT Overdrive, um, it is basically one eighth of the pixels are actually <laughs> generated conventionally and the rest is via upscaling, right? Yeah. However, this has opened the door to a brand new uh, experience, really. Yep. You know, to a fully past phase version of Cyberpunk, and it works, and it and it scales, right? So, as we've seen, you know, forty sixty Ti can do Cyberpunk past facing three nine nine dollar GPU, um, and on the two nine nine dollar GPU with the uh, with the the ray count mod, 
you know, that, that, that GPU is producing a path-traced cyberpunk. And it's all because of frame generation um, and it's all because of DLSS2 providing those accelerating factors that are opening the door to new experiences actually being viable. They would right. not be viable. So in, in, in essence, what it's doing is giving tools to developers to take visuals to the next level. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out there, John, uh, the concept of what is real and what is, uh, you know, um, uh, fake, if you like, um, if people knew the, you know, the, the nips and tucks, which, you know, which have gone into games going all the way back to the dawn of history, <laughs> of gaming history, you know, <laughs> it's always been there. It's just a new tool that's been developed to uh, to open the door to those new experiences. So, you know, the, you know, going back to the classic example back in the day, it was one of the Tekken games on the PS360 where the, um, the PS3 version had a lower um, resolution than the Xbox 360 version, right? But because the texture filtering quality was significantly higher, in the scope of that game's presentation it didn't matter what the resolution was lower. You got more detail. So right. all of these tricks have been happening for decades, right? And um, maybe it's the fact that it's a feature that is um, brand new, initially exclusive to one vendor's card. But, you know, we're seeing the democratization of upscaling and soon frame generation. And it's just become, going to become another tool that developers have had in order to advance the visual arts. And really, at this point, I feel like we're reaching a point now where DLSS can and often does look better than native resolution anyways. Right. It's taking a while to get right. there. It's not true in every game, but, you know, it's continuing to evolve. Right. And there's going to be a point where it's something you actually want to use. Uh, just for image quality purposes, it does such a good job at cleaning up uh, aliasing issues and shimmering and in-surface shimmering in a way that TA often does not. Uh, it tries, but you end up with more artifacts there sometimes. There are always going to be games that aren't well optimized, quote unquote optimized, right? Yeah, but right. Simil similarly, there are going to be games that wouldn't be possible right. without these techniques, right? So it's all about, you know, there's a sliding scale, right? And there's going to be games that are on one end of it and games that are it's, on the other end of it. You know, it kind of reminds me of all the debates around CG versus practical effects that happen in the movie industry. And a lot of people <laughs> like to harp on on bad CG and they point to that, oh, that would be so much better practical without realizing that so many things, the CG that's good, you don't even notice that it's there. You may not even think it's CG at all. You think it's practical, but it's actually CG, right? That stuff's everywhere mm -hmm. and it's used very well. It's just the bad examples that stand out. And I think there has to be some caution with this in mind on the game side, because I do think when you take a technology like say FSR2 and you try to push it too hard, like setting your native resolution to like 720p or less, it can have a pretty detrimental impact on the image. People see that and they're very quick to say, oh man, it's reconstruction. This is bad. This looks terrible. But it's not It's not the fault of the reconstruction per se. It's that it's being sort of used and abused a little bit too much. So finding ways to generate, improve the final output is, is critical. And you got to find the right middle mm -hmm. ground on that, I think. Yeah, interesting. I mean, the other thing, of course, is that um, it is going to be the consoles that define this generation, right, in terms of um, lead development platforms. And um, upscaling is going to be essential. I mean, we saw right from the off with um, uh, the initial Unreal Engine 5 yep. demos, they're all using temporal super sampling, but upscaling, whatever. Maybe this is where our discussions on PS5 Pro come back to. If that thing exists and Sony is focused on creating like a proprietary reconstruction technique or hardware accelerated reconstruction in that, it could be a gigantic win for that machine if it is in fact real, right? Like that would be a great approach for them uh, with a pro style system. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So yeah, fascinating debate. We're not seeing the end of it, but I do think there needs to be some level of acceptance that new techniques are going to require the use of new tools to actually make them viable and to make them scalable. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, I've always sort of alluded to Immortals of Avium on Xbox Series S. That's well below the minimum specifications here. But somehow, I mean, we have to wait and see how they've managed to get it to, to work, but it is working, right? It is coming out. And it wouldn't have been possible, I don't think, without, did they, without uh, those upscaling. Alex, did they things. specify the frame rate targets then? They said 60 so, FPS, I thought. So they're doing 60 okay. FPS on consoles with all that. So 
Yeah, wow. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. 